These videos are working towards boat diagrams. We start with what is frequency response? So a summary of where we're going. We're going to start here with what is frequency response and then later on we're going to ask questions like why are these useful and how do I represent frequency response information in a helpful fashion and ultimately why is this relevant to feedback loop analysis and design which is the end point for our videos. So again we're going to begin with what is frequency response. So here's a simple picture. Frequency response refers to system behavior. So that's important that you recognize when you use the word frequency response, you're talking about something about a system. We're going to focus on linear systems and therefore assume that they can be represented or modeled using a transfer function. What we're going to do then is take the system here for convenience. I'm just going to call it G of S and I'm going to feed into that system a sinusoidal input. There you can see u equals sine omega t and the signal you'll see it's it's given here for convenience. Okay so there's my sinusoidal signal going into the system and what we're going to do next is say what happens to the output. Well after some transients it's not to worry too much about what they are the output will settle into a sinusoidal signal itself. Okay and you'll notice we've said this output can therefore be written using this sort of equation y equals a sine of omega t plus phi. So it's got the same frequency as the input but a different amplitude a and there is a phase shift phi. Okay so when the input sinusoid had a frequency omega the output signal had the same frequency but a different a and a different phi. Okay, and the question we might want to ask is, what if we change the frequency? So here's a different example. I'm going to put u equals sine of mu t, and then you'll notice that the output comes as y equals c sine mu t plus theta. And the key thing is, if you compare this a and this c, and this phi and this theta, they will not be the same. Okay, so the amplitude of oscillation of the output changes with frequency, and the phase shift changes with frequency. And frequency response is a description of how the amplitude and phase shift of the output, and that's measured relative to the input, change with frequency. We're going to give some examples and this will be clearer. So here's a first example. The input is marked in red. So let's just show you here. Here's the input signal. And in this particular case, you'll see that the input signal is simply sine t. The frequency is 1. And you'll also notice that the amplitude of the input signal is 1. We tend to use 1 for convenience, so we're not carrying surplus numbers. Now, what's the output signal done? Well, you'll see the output signal is marked here with this blue curve. Clearly, the output signal has got the same frequency of oscillation, but it's got a different amplitude and a different phase shift. So we might want to say, okay, what is this amplitude? What is this phase shift? So first of all, I hope it's obvious that the amplitude is about 1.2. You can see if I do peak to peak, and this green arrow marks it, this value up here is about 1.2. This value down here is about minus 1.2. So half peak to peak is about 1.2. What about the phase shift? Well, the way to do this is to look at points of corresponding phase. So if I take that input there and I take the output there, you can see the difference is approximately one second. Now I'm, I'm deliberately being approximate here because we're just looking at the graph and that will correspond to about one radian. And therefore here is the corresponding output signal. Can you see y is going to be 1.2 times sine of t minus 1. So the output is clearly lagging behind the input. You can see that, and that's why I've written t minus 1. It's the same model then, but now I've changed the frequency. I'm going to use 2 radians per second, so I've got sine of 2t. So what's happened? Well, first of all, if you look at the amplitude of oscillation of the output, you can see it's now different. And looking at this graph, you'll notice it's about 0.62. Hopefully you can see that for yourself. 
Also, if we look at the phase shift, you'll see the phase shift has also changed. So while that one's not quite so obvious, if I take a corresponding point there and there, <coughs> you'll see the phase shift, or the, the time difference between those peaks, is about 0 0.9 seconds. And because we're at 2 radians per second, that corresponds to 1.8 radians. So what have we got? Here is the corresponding output signal. And obviously this is a approximate because I've just read it from the graph. I've got y equals 0 0.62 sine of 2t and again minus 1.8 because the output is lagging behind the input. So what are the observations? As the frequency of the input changes, the amplitude of the output changes and the phase shift of the output changes. And frequency response is a description of how the amplitude and phase shift depend upon the frequency of the input. In other words, how the characteristics of the response depend upon the frequency. And that's why it's called frequency response for short. Now, just to be clear, we need to define amplitude and gain. Some systems will include integrators, and hence, even with a sinusoidal input, the output signal might not be centered on the zero. So we've got to be careful to define what we mean by amplitude. And the answer is it's half peak to peak, which you'll see is marked by this double green hour below. So let's give an example. Let y be given by b plus a sine omega t. So b is this value here, and 2a is half peak to peak. And you'll see that by marking those numbers there, I get y equals b plus a sine omega t plus phi. So when you're talking about the amplitude of oscillation, you need this a term. And don't be confused by the fact there might be a b in there somewhere. So the gain is the ratio of the output amplitude to the input amplitude. So that's the definition you need to know. What was the amplitude of the input signal? And the gain is the ratio of the output to the input. Now, for convenience, we often choose inputs to have uh, an amplitude of 1. What about definition of the phase shift? So let the output signal be given there. There it is, y equals b plus a sine omega t plus phi. And what I'm going to do is shift this signal by t1 seconds. So you'll see I've done that. Where I had t before, I've now got t plus t1. So I've got an omega t and an omega t1 term. And what you can see is the phase shift is omega t1. So there's a clear relationship between the shift in time, t1 seconds, and the shift in radians, omega t1. So a time shift of t1 is equivalent to a phase shift of omega t1. And hopefully this is obvious. The units balance because frequency omega is in radians per second. You multiply radians per second by seconds and you get radians. So an example to look at then. How might we compute the gain and phase for the system given here? Where the dotted line, this one here, corresponds to the input. And you'll see it's got an amplitude of 1. And this solid line corresponds to the output. So first, if we look at the phase shift, you'll see we've marked some vertical lines, so you can see the time difference between the two um, plots. And you'll see that's approximately 0.25. And therefore, using that the phase shift is omega times this time shift, I can write down for my output signal that I'm going to have sine omega t minus omega. And in here, I can put 0.25. Five, because that was the time shift. Now, as far as the amplitude goes, <coughs> the amplitude of the input was 1. You can see that. And the amplitude of the output is marked here. And you can see that's about 0 0.2, should we say 7. I'm not going to be overly precise. And so I can put this in here. Here's a different example then. So the question is, what is the amplitude and phase, or gain and phase, for this particular system. So if we start with the amplitude, you'll notice I've deliberately not centered this one on the origin, just to make you think. So if I draw peak to peak, and you'll remember that this value, peak to peak, is 2a. So that's how we're working out the gain. We go peak to peak, and that's twice the gain. So if I look at those values, this is about 
and this one's about 1.65 and so the difference is 1.1 so I've got 2a equals 1.1 or a is approximately 0 0.55 so that's the gain now as far as the phase goes what I want to do is find points of corresponding phase so I've got this one here and this one here so the first one corresponds to about 50.8 seconds and the second one to about 51.7 seconds so you'll see this phase shift is about 0.9 seconds and therefore omega delta t is going to be 3 times 0.9 which gives me 2.7 radians So in conclusions, gain and phase depend on frequency. And if we put a sinusoidal input into a linear system, we expect the output to have a curve a bit like this. Y equals A sine omega t plus phi plus b. And in general, A is a function of omega and is defined as the system gain. Phi is also a function of omega and is defined as the system phase. And frequency response is simply the information stored in A of omega and phi of omega. That is, how do the gain or amplitude and phase of the output vary as I change the input frequency? Now, there's a warning. If you're doing this at home, please remember you need to look at asymptotic plots, not the transients, because in the transients, the output will not yet be a proper sinusoid.